Hi, everybody. Welcome back to an all new episode of the Forever and a Day After Show with me, your host, Terrell Anthony, and my wonderful, beautiful co host, Matthew Preston. Hi, Matthew. How are you? Oh, you think I'm beautiful? That's so amazing. I, do, I think, you think you're beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> I'm I fantastic. I'm super I... excited for today's show. It's going to be great. We have a lot yeah, going on. I'm... Well, I'm super excited, but I'm also very, very sad. I don't want to give any spoiler alerts away. Um, but the most recent episodes like broke my heart. It, me it too. Broke my heart for for a multitude of reasons. Um, but before we bring on our special guest today, uh, Matthew, how have you been? How how's this past week been for you? Just to kind of Fine. check in. <laughs> That's it. Let's bring on our special That's guest. <laughs> no, no. Listen, I've been trying to make sure we do mental checks. People have been saying make sure you do mental checks on your friends and everybody. I have people checking. It's just like, we've been through a lot this past year yeah. and it's so important to always check on each other. Mentally, I'm good. And I thank you. And I hope that you are as well. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Well, listen, let's get right to it. Let's not keep our fans waiting anymore. We have the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented Veronica Dang on today. Hi, Veronica. Woo! The newcomer on the block and my personal Woo! friend. Hi, I'm Veronica Dang. Love you, Matt. Yeah, I love, love it. Nice to meet you. Listen, I think you are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I have been stalking you uh, yes. prior to Forever Today. Um, and I'm just so happy that you are a uh, part of the Forever and a Day family forever and always. Yeah, I'm so grateful. And it's all because of Matt. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I guess love we, can that. Tell, we can tell the story. So Veronica and I met on the set of uh, Russian, I almost said Paper Doll, Russian Doll. And I remember we were talking and I was just like, this girl is super cool. She has amazing ideas. We were kind of like collaborating and then she invited yeah. me to um, AD one of her amazing short films. And then we have um, friends in common and support each other. And whenever the casting call went out, I kind of blasted it on Facebook because I have a lot, we have lots and lots of actor friends in common. And Veronica yeah. was one who actually uh, picked up on it. And I'm so glad that she did because Avery was only supposed to be a couple of episodes, but she in season, yeah, season two yeah. as Miranda's as Miranda's doctor. So in season two, you came back as a as a full time regular. I mean, that's kind of what happens, right, in the Fremen a Day land. Like, I feel like everyone's supposed to be like a, a one hit character, and then they end up writing more. So, Veronica, tell us how you first of all, obviously, we know how you're connected and how you came into the Fremen a Day family. But how has it been playing this role, and then going past how you originally thought you were only going to be on for one episode? I mean, it's definitely been the soap opera ride, and I felt like I got the full soap <laughs> opera experience because I was like, yeah. I mean, I auditioned for one of the bigger roles, but I like didn't think I was gonna get it. I just like the role's like not quite perfect for me. Which one? I for, but I was like, was I just it? wanted it was Stephanie's. Oh, my, but, um, my. I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna get that. But I was like, well, let me just like do it just so that they know me because yeah, I didn't know Casey or at all. Like, at all. so I was like, you know, because an actor, you just like it's about <laughs> in the room, not booking the job. Yeah, and then um, he's like, hey how about this doctor role? I was like well I've done that before so I was like it was one episode I was like fine I still get to be a soap which is like a dream of mine um so then I did it and then like I don't know maybe a couple weeks or a month or so afterwards after I filmed it or whatever they're like oh hey we created this whole role for you that was not supposed to exist and you're gonna get the full season um That's I know that people don't like what so happens awesome. but I knew what was gonna happen in the end I always knew from the beginning you always know. Well, we, That's amazing. We're, we're definitely going to talk about that later in the recaps of, yeah. of what yeah. happens, especially the past two episodes. Um, something that you have done, which I supported and I absolutely love, was Veronica created uh, an all Asian SNL like um, weekly, it was like a week, monthly show, a sketch show. Monthly. And I, 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 I watched it. I loved it. How did this come to be? Well, you know, I always wanted to be an SNL. That's a good <laughs> dream of mine. So, you know, I grew up watching it, you know, staying up late and stuff. And um, then I was like, but I never thought it was possible. Yeah. But then I started seeing like, you know, like an Ali Wong, <laughs> you know, those kind of people. Um, and then Crazy Rich Asians. So I was like, well, maybe... It could be possible now yeah. but then i went, went looking to see if there's a team i could join you know because i went through like ucb um upright citizen parade which mm -hmm. like feeds a lot of the snl people 
yeah. but there was like no Asian like groups that I could be a part of. It was just like mostly white and I would be the token Asian and I just never could like be a part of it. So I was like, well, I don't want to, but I guess I'll just start one because it doesn't exist. That's how you do I it. Mean, and- and, and Veronica, that's, you really do have to create your own seat at the table. You know, talking to you from a personal experience, as we know, before we get into the show, there has been an uprising in anti-Asian attacks going on in the world, also against the uh, Black community as well. How has that in the past year, obviously with a pandemic, so we were fighting a pandemic, we were fighting a race war, we were fighting injustices against women. We were also fighting injustices against the LGBTQ community. Then of course, you know, as I said, the race war against Asian and, and the black community. How has that affected you? You know, and just from, you know, a person of color to another, how are you? How are you? I mean, today is okay, but it's been a really tough year because um, uh, once the pandemic hit, yeah, immediately, um, you know, there were people in government that were blaming Chinese, right? Yeah. But then the problem is that people can't tell the difference between different Asians. No, so then they not. started attacking all Asians, even before now, like just yeah. at the very start of the pandemic and all the businesses were suffering and everything. So I was always like having trouble. You yeah, know? It was, and it was then, anxiety. It's, it's yeah. this anxiety, Veronica, that you feel and that um, I, I was walking the other day um, and this car backfired and it was a shot and I ducked. And, but, but it was just the car backfiring. And I think that people have to understand like for, for us and, and people of color, and it, it's so difficult. And I'll tell you this, I stand with my Asian brothers and sisters. If I ever am out and I see someone being attacked or yes. maligned because of their race, we're fighting and we're going we gonna to fight hard. Like it's going to, and I might not come out the winner, but we're going to come, we, we, we're going down swinging. And it's just, I, I want you to know that you're a beautiful soul and you are part of this world. And I, I'm here for you and we're here for each other. And I, I love you very, very much. Oh, I really appreciate that. And I mean, it's the same for everyone who's, you know, cause it's all, cause we're all in this together. We have to be we're all fighting, you know. Yeah. Something that Darrell and, said, Yes, I mean, I feel like to everybody out there, to everyone who's listening and watching, is stand up for everyone. Stand up for injustice. And if you see yeah. it happening, say, if you see something, say something. That's why, I mean, I, the hashtags and, and oh my God, I'm not going to cry again. We all know I'm very, I can be very sensitive. I'm not going to be sensitive because I, I do heart you both. Um, and that's why I just think that we don't need hate in this world. For, it's just no. it's so stupid. It's so unnecessary and, and dumb. And that's why I think both of you and I think um, for also being artists, I think that we as artists uh, can sort of paint that picture of what it is that we need to fix and what it is that we need yeah. to do better with. And also I want to say, Veronica, with your model majority shows, they were sold out all the time. So you, you are yeah. onto something, you are, it's fantastic. It's not, I mean, because of the pandemic, it's not over yet. And no, no, it's not. no. And, and she's still so. doing it and that's why, um, yeah, because I was like, I was like so depressed, like when the, the pandemic, you know, when we were so first depressed. locked down, and I was like, yeah. but I was like, I knew that my team needed it, and then people in the role needed laughter. Yeah, and so I was like, laughter is like, pull it together, and it's like, <laughs> you know, so I was like, I can't, you know, be out there like protesting because I have to, you know, I have elderly parents to take care of, so I can't be like out there, like, yeah, you know. Well, we, you have us. we will protest for you. <laughs> <laughs> we will protest well, for I you. I protest yeah. online, you know, yeah, yeah. fighting with racist tools online. And, it's you know, my favorite thing to do. Right. Yeah, no, I love and, a good, like, you know, oh, a, a fight, an online fight. I'm just like, oh, you want to debate? Let's debate. Let's play. Let's, <laughs> let's like debate. And anytime you want to tag me in a post so I can jump into fight, Veronica, <laughs> let me know. Because I got plenty. Oh, no, one of, on all one. I have is time. One, one at a time. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I just like want to bring the arts because we do love arts. her and joy yeah. and that's why I'm so grateful for my majority and I'm also grateful for every day because it was such a nice distraction and something that and we can you know have people so can much enjoy to take a break from all the madness you're doing yeah so what are what other shows are you doing you're J you're on JLJ good morning this morning I was yeah 
and that also- finished up. And then I did an Easter hair with also wrapped up. So yeah, thank you, James, for like, take care of me. <laughs> yeah, listen, JLJ Media is is really good. We talk about this weekly about how great they are with diversity and, and bringing new voices um, to, to the conversation. And that's what it's all about, right? Having conversations with new voices and new people. But I want to talk to you about Dr. Avery. So <laughs> tell us, a little bit about her as a character, you know, our our listeners obviously already know they've been speaking, you know, listening to her for, you know, the past few episodes and stuff, but tell us a little bit about her and what it meant for you to play that role. Um, It's funny because before I went to acting, I was actually supposed to go to medical school. Nice. So like, it's like so funny when I get these like, you know, healthcare worker, doctor roles. So I was like, well, I can't be a real one, but at least I can play one. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) <laughs> so it's funny when um you know I was supposed to be this one episode of the first season like at the end you know to help treat uh, Miranda and yeah. I get this block of like medical terminology just like you My know own. not a lot of character it's just like straight up you know this is how we're treating you with this like you know experimental treatment um and then it's just funny like it's just, yeah but it, from that you know Casey's you know, saw something in that this like this kind, caring person. And that's what I feel like Avery is. Like she just wants to help people. So you know, even when they're like even if, even if they wrong her, <laughs> no call it out. So is, but no care in the segue. Wrong, no matter what. Are you we have we have to play a game with you because we love playing games here. And we do actually, love playing games. I want to get you into the mind of Avery. It's called Can You Ever Forgive Gregory? <laughs> This is how we're going to play. So Darrell and I will give you some scenarios. Maybe they happened on the show. Maybe they didn't. Um, and we're going to ask you as Avery, or maybe you as Veronica, could you ever forgive Gregory? Yeah. Are you ready to play? Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Let's do it. I'll start off. Okay. So Gregory has pawned off the house that you are living in. Can you ever forgive him? <sighs> If he buys me a bigger, nicer house. Okay, so is that that's a yes? Would you say yes? Yeah, it's possible. One yes for forgiveness, Darrell. <laughs> okay. So Gregory has a psycho ex who may or may not be a danger to you, but he decides to keep it from you. Do you forgive him? I did not forgive him at the time. So no, that's a no. no. I went right for the jugular. Matthew was like, oh no, I went right for it. I was like, I, have I was like oh no. <laughs> you really did. Uh, okay, we Avery was pretty pissed about that one. <laughs> yes, she was. She was oh, yeah. upset. Oh yeah, the next one. Okay, so Gregory has decided to get you a job at the hotel, but oops, he has to fire you because, well, the mob has told him to. Are you forgiving him or not forgiving him? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, that'd be a yes, because I wouldn't want that job. I'm a doctor. Right? <laughs> <All right. laughs> Two yeses, okay. one no. What's next? I have, a, I have a really big hypothetical. Okay, this is so fun. I love playing games. Matthew and I get so excited about our games. We really All right, do. so you and Gregory have had a child. Okay, and Gregory decides to, instead of saving the money for the child's college fund, he spends all of it in gambling. Would you forgive him and you guys make it back together as a family or would you not forgive him? Ooh, is it the kid? I don't think I can forgive that one because it's like, it wouldn't be the first time since he has a pattern of that. Mm-hmm. That means he didn't learn, so I would say no. Wah, wah. That's no. Give that's us the tiebreaker, Matthew. Yes, no, here's the tiebreaker. Are you ready for it? And this is a fun one. So <laughs> Isaac has been hurt in the hospital. As we know, Isaac is Gregory's brother. But unfortunately, because he just, let's say he lost his job at the magnifier, he has no means to pay for it and says, hey, Avery, baby, can you please slide in my brother and help him out with don't tell anybody that you're doing it? Forgiveness or no forgiveness? Mm, well, it's not really forgiveness because I would save Isaac, but um. But on like like you know like totally shady, totally like going against your practice. I feel like Avery would figure out a way to get it done legally. So that's a yes. I guess that's a yes. So then I guess that guess what, Gregory, you're forgiven. Avery will forgive you. 
<laughs> well, I think that Avery's a very forgiving. I mean, but that I'm not surprised that it turned out that way. And I'll say this because Veronica, as you said in describing Avery a few moments ago, that she is a very warm and loving person. And so there's more that Avery will forgive in a person because she likes to see the best in people than than she won't, I believe. No, for sure. And we're gonna find even till the end. Even <laughs> right very, till the very end. end. <laughs> which honestly, we put it off long enough but we are going to have to talk about some recaps. Yeah. Let's get into it. All right, people. I hope you're all caught up on Forever in a Day because we're about to give you some really, really big recaps of what recently went down. Matthew, kick us off by telling us what recently went down and let's discuss with Veronica how she feels about these storylines. Okay, great. Well, I have to get my notes up and ready. There we go. Nope, that's not How it. How like you're not going to take that segue? <laughs> you said, wait a minute. I'm not <laughs> uh, that's why I was like, yeah, you can do Hey, there's my, oh my gosh. So uh, because technology loves me and hates me, uh, it actually finally came up. So now At I least it's you now because it's usually me. The recaps. Um, but hey, while I'm pulling it up, uh, Darrell, why don't you get us started? I'll, I'll start with it. All yeah, right. And, so and good luck with my notes. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. So Elaine settles into rehab with a one-on-one -on -one with her new director, Rose Cunningham. By the way, love that name, Casey and Candace. Love that name. <laughs> uh, Rose makes her face the truth to why Elaine drinks and won't let up. Rose's tough method gets Elaine to admit that she is an alcoholic. Rose informs her that the tough end facility treatment has begun. I think that's such, you know, we always say to people, the first part is admitting, right? That you have an issue and a problem. I think the way that, you know, Casey and Candace have crafted and all the writers um, have crafted this story is with such care. And we spoke last week um, when we were talking about Elaine and everything that was going on. Um, it's, it's such an interesting story. And Elizabeth, you know, really has been pulling from a lot of different places to tell the story. So I think it's great. So Veronica, you first, before we get to Matthew, I don't know if you have your notes, Matthew, how do you feel about this story and how do you feel it affected you? I mean, I love Elizabeth um, yeah. playing Elaine in this. She's amazing. Um, and I love that Candace and Casey just will talk about all the issues all at once. I mean, yeah. addiction and alcoholism is real, especially when you're mixing it with those prescription painkillers. So I'm just glad that she's finally getting help. Um, I really like with that, with the family intervention, I was like, not sure she was actually going to do it. So yeah. I feel like she does want to get better. I'm not sure about this Rose Cunningham and her uh, methods. As you saw, I think it was in the next, next episode of like, whoa, this is pretty yeah, tough love. I was like, mm, I don't know how professional this is. <laughs> I mean, I loved, I, it was very um, heartbreak, heartbreaking and prolific whenever Elaine admits that she's an alcoholic. I thought that that yeah. was a very poignant scene, especially for the character. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I think that what I've noticed about all of these characters in the show is that they they all have some type of addiction they're addicted to something whether it's you know alcohol or drug Definitely. money po political power Definitely. or just to a person there are people who are addicted to people you know we talked Definitely. about stephanie and how she's being um uh stalked so i think that it's interesting and everything's going to come to a head with all of these storylines um that i'm very excited to happen so matthew give us our next one I will do, because guess what? My notes are up and running. <laughs> Stephen, <laughs> Stephen and Lenore continue their new friendship and or flirtation. Lenore offers help with Stephen's quest to help Melanie with her ALS. Yeah, another tough story, man. Um, I love Beth Ellers and Beth and I actually had a conversation when we first started, you know, we, we met and we were, we met under the guise, I think I've told the story before, we met under the guise of rehearsing and Beth and I talked for like an hour. I was like, Beth, we haven't rehearsed. And she said, we just did. We didn't have to read the script. We rehearsed because we got to know each other and we became cool within an hour. And then we were texting for a few days. So I know the work that Beth has put into this story and, and, and playing, um, you know, Melanie, I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm excited that Lenore <laughs> is more involved in it. You know how we feel about Lenore. I'm worried. I'm totally worried, Darrell, because I don't want L Lenore to get her heart broken because, you know, Stephen has such a strong past and such strong feelings for Melanie that I think Correct. Lenore is going to get uh, shown some heartbreak. And that's not good. Yeah. Veronica, what do you think about that storyline? I mean, 
I love Beth Ellers and I wish I had a scene with her ever, but it never oh. came to be. But I guess it's not good if she had because then I would have to treat cancer and Alzheimer's. Right. <laughs> but um um I'm glad they talked about Alzheimer's and you know I've had some family recently pass away and they had Alzheimer's mm-hmm. and dementia. So that's a personal story that's like really important to me. So I definitely like love seeing that in soaps and that people become aware of like I'm I'm predicting up on everybody around you. Yeah, no, I'm predicting an upcoming love triangle. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But guess no, Lenora really needs to stay away from. I mean, I have to though. say, like she's like full out hitting on him, and he's like for real, like looking up how like how to like deal with it. You know, I don't know. You get hurt, guys. She's gonna get hurt. He's definitely gonna get hurt. But I'm like, maybe is that where her daughter is from? Right. <laughs> but guess what? Yeah, I mean, guess what, y'all? <laughs> Miranda and Donovan discuss Jonah and his affair with Stephanie. Miranda catches Donovan in his lie over not knowing Stephanie. Miranda still wants revenge against Stephanie for destroying her marriage. Donovan is more than fine with Miranda's devious kidnapping scare plan. Okay, Miranda, what are you doing? You, uh, discuss. That wasn't in my notes. That was actually me saying that. No, I yeah. can't believe it. Yeah. Like, Avery saved her life. <laughs> Look, and this is yeah. what you use your life with? This is not I mean, what she was planning. Revenge. Yeah, I think that people, uh, it's tough, right? Because, you know, like you said, every, everyone's, when your job is a doctor, you know, you save those that you know sometimes they make the wrong decisions. I think that, obviously, I feel like this is going to backfire, but I also feel, I feel bad for Miranda. It's Is that crazy to kind of feel that? I kind of feel a little bit bad for her as well. I feel bad for her. Because there's a little bit of I'm just like oh honey but I know that this journey that she sometimes when people are doing that I'm trying to my best because listen Casey and them are always on my neck about spoilers so I'm trying to work my way around oh saying, really uh, they they because I'm always like hey what about and they're like hmm. so basically well, here's a spoiler I, will say Wait, that- I can tell you a spoiler it's not gonna end well how about that that's perfect <laughs> it's that's the best way it's not gonna end well but it's not gonna end well but Jarrell What's going on with Caitlin and Lakin? Caitlin and Lakin reunite in bed together. They found out that Sky has been released but will be a social pariah forever. Caitlin runs into Sky and confronts her. Sky is not over her ex. Listen, I tried to tell y'all, Sky has lost it. Like, mm-hmm. Sky lost it from day one when she's just under this impression. She's like, I'm gonna get her. Like, y'all ain't gonna be together. Like, it's fine. I just think, though, when someone's that unhinged, you just know, again, to quote you, Matthew, it's not gonna end well. But what's interesting about a lot of these storylines not ending well, it's normally not gonna end well for people around them because when big things like this happen, it affects the entire community, not just the people involved in the story. So that's what I'm excited about. And we'll talk a little bit at the end of this of how. Oh, no, I loved it. I loved whenever like Lakin was like, you know, you did what you did, but guess what? It didn't work because now I have no feelings for you. So when she said, screw you or something, I was like, yeah. go, Caitlin. She's sharp. She's very, very sharp. Um, Veronica, how do you feel about that story and Sky's like unhingedness as, as a character playing Dr. Avery, who's had deal with some unhinged I mean, stuff. Oh. Avery's just as naive, but this idea that social shaming is enough to shut down Sky is totally like, <laughs> there's no way. Like she's not listening to anybody. She's not even listening to her mama. Like she's mm-hmm. on her own doing her own thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. she took down the town stalking. I mean the ghost stalker. Right. There's so many stalkers and um I know best lovers and, and ex-lovers, I guess I'll say. But then going off into like the business political world, we're back into it a little bit, I guess. Andrew informs Colin and Gunnar that Emma and Connor were in Wisconsin. Colin is determined to find them. Andrew informs Gunnar that his political rival, Jonah, is planning on getting out of the game. Glad that Jonah's planning on getting out of the game. I am, because I know, Matthew, you had said, I believe in our last week's show, that the one thing about Jonah, I feel, is that he does care about his family. And I feel like when you have Gunner, um, he doesn't. Gunner does not. I mean, I, I don't feel like Gunner cares as much about his family. I'm going on record and saying it <laughs> as, as Jonah does. So I'm glad that Jonah may be getting out of the game and, and focusing more on himself and his family. So I we think will, that's a good thing. We will say allegedly because this is uh, allegedly. hearsay because Andrew supposedly has got this information from Miranda. So which mm-hmm. makes me think, um, 
okay, Andrew, do you really have feelings for Miranda? Or do you, are you trying to dig up Gert? You, Gert I said, are you just trying to dig up Gert for Gooner? Dirt for yeah. Gooner. Dirt let's for say, Gooner. Let's say you, Veronica. Well, I was shocked to hear that Jenna's quitting. I don't see that happening, but okay. Uh, usually, when, to usually when politicians say that they're going to take time off to spend time with their families because of a scandal or something else, but they, are, they really go back into it as soon as they can. You know, they don't really mean it. That They're like political animals. Yeah, also, I think I mean, like Jonah and Gunnar have like some weird, like they need each other to like keep each other, like pushing each other. You know what? I agree with that. And you know, we've seen in the past few years for sure about politicians who need they, they needed to like kind of have each other to kind of have that adversary to kind of go back and forth because it kind of gives them strength to keep going but I agree I think that when people leave it's because of secrets of some sort and speaking of secrets Mama Lou supports Emma as she gathers her thoughts over Colin on the forum about her next move Lucinda is hiding a huge secret from her daughter dun dun Matthew, how do you feel about that? And I know you love Mama Lou. I love me some Mama Lou. Um, I'm loving to see Mama Lou be bad. Because then, wh what is she hiding? I don't know. I want to know. I, also, I just love her because she gives me Moira Rose realness. And that is an amazing thing for the farm that she's staying on with Penny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should do an episode where we all play each other's parts as well. Oh, just giving Casey and Candace ideas. I will be Mama Lou. I want to be Mama no, Lou. No, we're going to fight over that. That was the good love. Love her. We all want to play Mama Lou. Can we just all oh have God, like, It's amazing. I just want her to, yeah, because you know, like a voice like that, she's going to do that. Oh, yeah. It's so good. But what is this secret? What can this secret be? What is she harboring? Lord, yeah. Don't ask me. You know? Oh. Don't ask me. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know either. I'm just saying, whatever I say could slip out. I just, I can't be held accountable. I'm oh trying to keep Antoine alive. Well, we got, we got more to talk about. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. So Leslie That's decides it. that she and Alex are through for good, and Alex is crestfallen over her wanting a divorce. Sad, but you know what? Guess what? It's bound to happen with these two because they are just, they're both kind of in a toxic relationship. Yeah, and Alex is trifling, so bye. I'm with it. I just love no, he's like, oh, don't divorce after I just slept with, um, you know, had some oh, he hot sex with her, somebody too. else right before. <laughs> right about to tell her. Well, hopefully we're going to see what happens down the, down the line for them. And um, this was the one time I was actually for, I was on side, on Leslie's side. I'm not, I, she wasn't Bratley for me. She was actually very um, smart in this one, I guess. Alex keeps yeah. cheating on her. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah. This is true. Yeah. Uh, okay. You so trying to have an excuse. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, we can see the I'm sorry. I thought you were having an excuse for it. I was like, don't be. He was cheating. He was doing the worst. Oh, my gosh. Well, these next two plots, they kind of intertwine with each other. And we're going to tell they you do. why. All visual here. Danielle and JJ are disappointed that their mom cannot join them for dinner. But Danielle is all about her new necklace. Well, it's not new, it's her family necklace. Jonah runs into a very lonely Stephanie. The two reconnect on a friendly basis. Jonah notices her earrings, which is missing a matching necklace. My prediction from a couple episodes, I believe have become right. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you, you say you know things. I mean, look, I just like, I want Danielle going down. And me and Candace have this thing. We're gonna go <laughs> back and forth until Antoine's on top. And Danielle's not. So I, I mean, great. Let her, let, let, it's time. Maybe she needs a little heartbreak or something to go on. I don't know. That's what well, I'm saying. I will say, I actually really loved uh, the reun, the re, I almost said the reunion. The reunion. Reunition. <laughs> what words? The reunion. I'm just going to make up words here. <laughs> I love the little reunion between Jonah and Stephanie. I thought that it was very funny. Yeah. It was, um, it wasn't them being like, oh, let's go and hump in my car. No, it was, yeah, are you I'm okay? How have you been? What's going on? And I thought that, and they weren't fighting each other and they were kind of getting back to their friendship that they had. Yeah, but Jonah really shouldn't be hanging with Stephanie if he wants to get back with Miranda, even if it's friendly. It's his poison? Do you, you think it's his poison? I think, listen, I think it's admirable if you can hang around someone who you've already had um, sexual relations with um, and can just 
cohabitate as friends. I think that's very difficult, especially when we know that that temptation could possibly still be there. I think in the real world, when we have situations like that, we do our best to, if we put ourselves in a situation with someone like that, it's because we know how it could end up. So it just really depends. I think that sometimes you have to kind of cut it. And I, I, I agree with you, Veronica. I think that if Jonah wanted it to work, then he might not have, should have continued conversation with Stephanie. I don't know. Plus the whole town saw the video. Right. <laughs> like even them to be ground, it's like it's gossip. And it's Avery like, saw it too because Avery was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Darrell, we have to talk about the biggest, I think the biggest plot that's going on, the hottest uh, front burner story. Tell us what is happening next. <sighs> I'm very upset that you making me do this because I have fell in love with you, Veronica. Aww. Um and because of that, I am going to make sure that I'm going to be doing a project soon and I'm going to have you a part of it because I need to, oh. the energy coming from you is fire and I need she's that. She's amazing. I will here we you. go. Thank you. She, she's everything. So here we go, guys. Gregory starts losing hope that Callum can't save Avery's life. Gregory knows who did this. Avery wakes up. Avery, Avery is thankful for her time with Gregory, but knows her time is up. She tells him of her future afterlife plans with a beautiful poem. Avery tells him goodbye for good and peacefully passes on. Veronica, before Matthew and I give any input, how was it filming that scene for you? How, how did all of that feel? I mean, it's been building up. I mean, uh, Casey and uh, she just wrote a really nice like arc for Avery and Gregory for that season. So, you know, and, and I didn't know Ben, uh, who's amazing and one of the best active partners ever had so I was really lucky to be matched up with him in this um the show uh we just like met each other like he was really good about like you know reaching out and like oh we need to like run lines in between things and That's oh amazing. and we talk and all that stuff in between so we like really built try to build that relationship off screen as well as on screen yeah and then just like yeah he's like you're like it's like that sweet meet cute in the snow and then you know it just like I said, I had the full soap experience. Like I got to slap, which was a dream of mine. I got to like have this like crazy backstory and then this like romance that of course just never works out well in soaps. Yeah. And then you know, and then end of my character. It was well, it was I, quite a bit. so it was very emotional that the last day. It was day very emotional for us because uh, we I mean they they we knew I I knew this because I I we found out about it and I was, I was crestfallen. I just love this word. I was crestfallen about it too. It was very sad. And I loved her poem. How did this poem come about? Who wrote this? Uh, Casey, because Casey loves to give me lots of hard things to say. <laughs> it was crazy because I'm like, five pages is dying while I'm crying. And then at the end I have to be like, stop that and the crying so I could get through the poem. Oh. So it was like, it was a lot. I was like wrecked for days. Um, after recording and then like hearing again I was like wrecked again because <laughs> I mean, the music and just seeing how everything you know, got put together I mean that's what happens to us actors I feel like when you play tough roles like that that requires a lot of emotion you are you are emotionally exhausted and, and almost physically exhausted as well. And especially with this, you know, I can't imagine you having to do this in person because it would have been even even crazier. But listen, I'm gonna go ahead and put this out there in the world. I'm hoping you really get the full soap experience and you get to come back as Avery's twin sister. Yeah, same. To, I was gonna, gonna say the same thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I keep on telling them, but you know, they're like not taking yet. <laughs> I mean, listen. You could, you, you, I feel like Avery's gonna be back as a ghost. She's gonna be haunting. Um, you know, I, 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 I see more Avery in the world, and more importantly, I see more Veronica Dang in the world of Forever and a Day. So oh. I don't think it's over yet. But I would love to do an evil twin play the. Oh night. yes. You know. Yes, that would be. So wait, be like I a mom too, title, like in training. <laughs> I thought of a new title. You actually, Darrell, you just inspired me. I think that a new show could be called Forever and a Dang. <laughs> forever and a dang i'm with it this has been it. This, has been Veronica, this is this has been absolutely for me 
so empowering to talk to you. I'm so glad that we were able to have the conversation we did at the beginning about, you know, what's going on in the world. And and I just love you. I'm so honored that I got to, to do this today. You know, I, early in the week, somebody was trying to book me because as Matthew knows, I'm always getting booked on Sundays when I have the show. And I said, no, I'm going to get to meet and talk to Veronica because, and I, I'm so glad I did. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Like I said, like we need all of you to keep creating. Um, the world needs art to make us kinder, safer. We need to make something yeah. again. Hello. We need to like work together soon. But also, oh, yeah. Veronica, where- Well, I'm vaccinated, so I'm ready to go shoot things. We all, yes. are. We all are. Me too. We all are. So yeah. Veronica, where can everybody find you and your amazing projects? Uh, follow me on, uh, at I, Veronica Ding. And um, definitely follow Model Majority too, modelmajority.com. We got a show on May 1st for uh, AAPI Heritage Month. And uh, we're focusing on uh, history. So you definitely do not want to miss it. That's amazing. Can't wait. I. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was, I was, I was just saying. Sorry. You know, of course, a car is outside blowing by my house. I always have sounds going on. Um, no, I was gonna say I can't wait to support you in that, Veronica. And anything you do, anytime you need me for support, girl, ping me, DM me. I'll be there. I'll show up because it's all about supporting each other. Awesome. Yeah. Girl, work Friend me. And social media. Yeah, social media. Right. where can yeah. they find you? Where can where are you found, Darrell, on social media? Well, oh, I thought you were gonna ask where am I found? I said, well, usually outside on the street. No, I'm <laughs> actually no, no, but not doing that. But like outside by the hydrants, whatever, Matthew. I'm over you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but you can find me on Twitter at Darrell Anthony. You can also find me on Instagram at I am Darrell Anthony and Facebook Darrell Anthony. Find me all over the place. Just type in Darrell Anthony. Like the old people say, Google me. I'm somewhere. Right. Google me too, uh, Matthew Preston at M Preston NYC. Also MatthewPreston.me. But guess what, people? We're not done yet. And you can also listen to GLG Media for Forever and a Day. We'll be back next week, but we'll be back right after this because we have a, an Forever and a Day extra after show. So thank you all. Yeah. Yes. Can't wait. Bye, everybody. See you Bye, soon. everyone. <sighs> <laughs> I love it. Did you edit? You stopped.